In today's trigonometry lesson, we're going to have a look at more questions that require a sketch. In lesson three, we had a look at questions where you were required to draw your own triangle using the given information and then use your triangle to answer the question. Today, we're going to do the same, but now we're also going to be required to use some reduction formulas. So in our example, we are given that sin 14 is equal to k, and we are asked to write the following in terms of k. So here we are going to start off using the given information to draw a triangle so that we can answer the questions. So in this case, we are going to draw a triangle specifically for 14 degrees, and then we need to add our correct side lengths. In lesson three, we had a variable as our angle, so we worked with a theta or an alpha. So there we had to determine in which quadrant we need to draw our triangle. Here, we have a specific value for the angle. We know it's 14 degrees, and therefore we know it's in the first quadrant. To complete our triangle, we need side lengths. So once again, I'm focusing on the information that was given. Sin of 14 is the ratio k or then k over 1. And we know that sin is the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. So if we go and add that on our picture, opposite and hypotenuse will then be k over 1. And then we can go and calculate our adjacent side using Pythagoras. And that means that the adjacent side is the square root of 1 minus k squared. Now that we have a complete triangle, we can go to our question. And the question is to write in terms of k. That implies that the answer will have some sort of k in it. Number one is sin of 194. Because we only have information about the angle size 14, we need to manipulate whatever we were given so that we end up with trig functions in terms of the angle 14. For that, we are going to use our reduction formulas. So we are going to start off with the questions we used while we did reduction formulas. 194 is in the third quadrant, and that is where sin is negative. And now we need to ask ourselves 180 plus what will give me 194, and that is 14. So we already know that the ratio for sin of 14 is k, so now it will be minus k. Number two, cos of 76. Because we only have information about a 14 degree triangle, we need to rewrite this in terms of 14. And then we need to realize that 76 and 14 add up to 90, which means we can use co-functions. So I'm going to rewrite this, saying that it is sin, because I'm using co-functions, of 14, because 14 and 76 add up to 90. And that means this ratio is also k over 1, or just k. Number 3 is now sin of 28. And once again, we only have information about 14 degrees, so we need to rewrite this in terms of 14, and for that, we need to realize that it is a double angle. 28 is the same as 2 times 14. And for this double angle, we have an identity, so we are going to expand it into 2 times sin of the single angle multiplied by cos of the single angle. And for sin 14 and cos 14, we can now use our information and our triangle. So sin of 14, we already know, is k. And cos of 14 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which will be the square root of 1 minus k squared over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So our final answer, 2k times the square root of 1 minus k squared. Question 4 is cos of 44. So once again, I now need to think. How can I rewrite 44 in terms of 14? And then you need to remember that we also have known triangles, our 30, 45, and 60 degree triangles. So if I combine this with 14, I can write 44 as 30 degrees, one of my known triangles, plus 
14, my new triangle that I have. And this is now one of my new compound angle identities and can be expanded to cos of the first angle multiplied by cos of the second angle minus sin of the first angle times sin of the second angle. So for cos 30 and sin 30, I'm going to use my known triangle and then cos 14 and sin 14, my new triangle. So cos 30 is my adjacent over hypotenuse. So that will be square root 3 over 2. And, and sin is opposite over hypotenuse. And that is 1 over 2. Cos 14 we know is the square root of 1 minus k squared over 1. And sin 14 is k over 1. In my first term I can now multiply and apply the roots to get to 3 minus 3k squared on 2. And in my second term, 1 times k over 2. And now I can put all of this on a common denominator of 2. And I will have the root minus k on 2. In question 5, we now see 1 minus 2 sin squared of 7. And once again, we need to think, how can I rewrite 7 in terms of my known angle this time, which is 14. And then 14 is 2 times 7. So I'm going to use one of my double angle identities and rewrite this as cos of 14 degrees. And using our new triangle, we now know that cos of 14 is the square root of 1 minus k squared over 1. In our last example, we now need to do a bit of extra manipulation before we can get to our 14 degree triangle. Here we have part of a double angle identity. So it helps if you know these identities really well so that you can immediately realize that we have the sin a cos a, but we don't have the two. So if we want to rewrite this identity into what we have, we only have sin times cos of an angle, so we need to divide by 2 on the other side. So we'll have sin of the double angle divided by 2. So this is now the identity that we have, and we are going to rewrite it to the left-hand side. So it's going to become sin of the double angle, which is 14 degrees, divided by 2. And we know that sin of 14 is k, so it's k over 2, which you can also write as half k.